In this video, we will learn how we can tune Oracle OHS HTTP server. And in fact, this is not specific to uh, Oracle OHS. Even you are working on Apache or some other versions of the Apache HTTP server. Okay, then you can use the same recommendations for the uh, tuning. So what is the purpose of a uh, web server? Okay, so when we talk about a web server, okay, the, 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 the main purpose of a web server, it take the request from the clients, okay, and then it forward the request to the backend application server. So based on the configuration, you may have certain static contents deployed at the OHS level, web server level, okay, but maybe for, uh, for, for the dynamic kind of a contents, okay, if your website has some dynamic contents, okay, then for dynamic contents, uh, it, the request will be redirect to your uh, backend application server, which could be your WebLogic server. Okay, so in a nutshell, you can say that uh, a web server intercepts all the requests from the clients, and then it forward to the WebLogic server or the backend application server. Okay, so web server is a very critical because this is the client facing server. Okay, so the tuning of web server is very important when we specifically when we work in a production environment. Okay, so this video will focus on how we can tune the number of sessions a web server can accept. Okay, or you can see the, the number of parallel or number of simultaneous requests or sessions a web server can handle altogether. So the main important concept of a web server is multi-processing modules, which we call it as an MPM, okay? So the web server accepts the multiple or simultaneous requests from the clients, okay? And then it create a child or you can say a parent process, okay? And then that parent process, okay? Which also referred as a child, okay? Sometimes, okay? And that it spawns many threads or you can say multiple uh, childs. Okay, and then each child or the multiple threads it spawns. Okay, it it accept the client request and then process the client request. So the concept of MPM is very important when we talk about the performance tuning of our server. Okay, so this is not really required for you to understand in very detail, but yes, basic concept is required. What exactly is MPM, and then which MPM is used by Oracle OHS web server. Okay, so when we talk about uh, Oracle HTTP server or Oracle web server, OHS server, okay, so there are three basically different type of MCMs, MPMs, which is supported by Oracle OHS. One more is there, but that is for the uh, default MPM for your, when you are installing your OHS on Windows server. Okay, so apart from that, you have three main MPMs, worker, prefog, and then event. Okay, and apart from these three, one is the WinNT. Okay, WinNT is specifically a default MPM, which is come with the OHS when you install your OHS on the Windows machine. Okay, so what exactly is the work of, uh, of the MPM is that it accepts the request and then process the request. Okay, but how it is going to accept the request and how it is going to process the request. Okay, it is based on the kind of MPM that you have selected, whether it is a worker, prefog, and event. Okay, so specifically to Oracle OHS server, okay, the default NPM is event. And if you go for the uh, some uh, open source like Apache web server uh, installations, okay, then for Apache web server, the default NPM is worker. Okay, so event and worker is almost same. It create a main parent process. And then from that parent process, it create a different generator, different threads. Okay, and each thread get the request of the client and then process that request. Okay, so you can say that there is a parent and then that parent create a different uh, child. Okay, and then each child process the request and then here each child I am referring as a threads. So event is based on the worker MPM only. Okay, but with few more enhancements, which is the default for OHS, right? And prefog is an older version and that also use in a certain kind of application that 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 to match certain kind of a comp compatibilities okay but when we talk about in general your apache web server will come with the worker npm and when you are installing your ohs oracle ohs okay then the default npm is your event okay so all the tuning parameters that is required to be tuned okay for a web server okay it 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 will be inside each npm Okay, and the entry of each MPM you can find in the http.conf file. 
So here you are seeing two directories for http.conf. Okay, that is because one is the first one is the staging directory for OHS, and second is the instance directory for OHS. So as a standard practice, whenever you have to do certain kind of a configurations in OHS, you have to perform the changes in the staging directory, which is the first one. And then when you will bounce the server, OHS server, the changes from staging will reflect in the dynamic or runtime directory, which will be inside your instances OHS one. Okay, so inside this HTTP.conf, you will see a different sections that is for each for, for each uh, worker or you can say for each MPM. So, okay, so in the screen, you can see uh, an area for the event MPM and second on the right side, you can see an entry for the worker MPM. Okay, and what are the important parameters that you have defined inside the MPM is start servers, minimum spread threads, maximum spread threads, threads per child, max request workers. Okay. And then apart from that, one more parameter is there that I will explain in the next slide that is called max clients. Okay, max clients. So in 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 Oracle OHS, the default NPM is event. Okay, so if you wanted to modify any of the parameter, okay, for the Oracle OHS, then open your HTTP.com file and update the parameter specifically, which is defined inside your event NPM. Okay. Make sure to update in event MPM because if you will update in for some other worker, then it will come will not come in the effect. Okay. Now the four key and important directives for when you define your parameters in your HTTP.conf inside your MPM. Or oh, okay, the start servers, max clients, server limit, and threads per child. Okay. So as I said that whenever you know, you start with a uh, uh, OHS server, okay? It first create a parent process, okay? And then it created different threads inside the parent process, okay? Now, start servers is a number that you define to create a parent process, okay? So here it is defined as the number of child SDB dot process on startup, okay? So here that parent is defined as a child process, okay? And inside child process, it will create multiple threads to take the request of the clients. Okay, so start server is just, you can say, is just to create a different child. Okay, and each child will create different threads. Okay, and server limit is the maximum number of HTTPD child processes the server will allow. That means, what is the maximum limit of the start servers that we can define inside the server limit? Okay, so for example, if the, I have defined start, uh, start servers as two, Okay, that means once you will start your server, OHS server, it will create two child process for HTTPD. Okay, and if I have defined server limit as six, okay, so at a dynamic runtime, okay, if uh, if if the server is experiencing is experiencing high load, okay, then it can spawn the server's limit from two to six. Okay, and threads per child that means the number of threads that can be created for each child, right? So that means if I have defined start server as two, okay, then I can define threads per child for each child process. Maybe if I have defined threads per child as 20, okay, and I'm and and, and I have defined start server as two, right? So the total number of threads will be generated as two into 20, that is 40. Because each start server or each server process will generate 20 threads, okay, that is called per child. Okay, and the max client is the maximum number of connections that will be processed simultaneously. So if, if someone is saying you that, okay, what is the capacity of your OHS web server? How many requests it can accept simultaneously or how many requests your web server can process simultaneously? Then simply you can see the limit of max clients. So what is the number that is defined in front of max clients, okay? But again, the, the, the count of max client is depend on the limit of your server limit and the threads per child, okay? So we will see that in the next screen in complete details. What does that mean? Whatever I, whatever I have said. Okay, so basically, uh, so when you log into your server, okay, to, so to check the child process, okay, you can just grab the HTTPD, PS hyphen E, have to grab the process and then you can grab with HTTPD. So HTTPD is the main child process and other child threads will be generated inside this main child thread. Okay, so here if you see the output, okay, there is a first process is, you can say is a child process with the process ID of 4891. And inside that child process, you have another threads with, with, with process ID 4899, 4901, and 5064. But each thread is having a parent ID of 4891. That is 
the first process with the process ID of 4891 is the main child process and other processes are the threads that are generated inside your child process with process ID 4891, which is the process ID of HTTPD service. Okay, so you will notice there will be a parent PID, which is typically the first row or the lowest PID column value of the HTTP dot processes. So above the parent is 4891, right? And there will be even only one parent. The children HTTP process, of course, each have their own PID, but their PPID values will be the parent PID. The PPID is the parent PID, which will be the PID of your main process. Okay, so your main process, which is of HTTPD, will not serve any request, but only it will monitor your child sex. Now let us understand how we can tune all the parameters properly, okay? Suppose that I have a OHS web server where I have defined start servers as two, threads per child 25, max clients 150, and server limit six. So how we can derive it, how we can uh, tune these values, okay? The first one is the start server directory where the value is two, okay? So start server directory we can define as child processes. Okay, so if the value is set to two, that means two HTTPD child processes will spawn up on the start of OHS. So very straightforward, if I have defined two as a start servers, that means two HTTPD processes will be generated when you will start the OHS. That means two main child process will spawn. Okay, now threads per child directory, here it is 25. So that we can say the threads per child. Okay, so as I said, whenever you start the OHS, first a child process generated, okay, initiated, okay, which you can see with by grabbing HTTPD, okay, and then each child process, you will have a multiple threads to handle the request. So here I have defined threads per child directive as 25, okay, that means this is how many threads will be started for each HTTPD child process, okay, what I'm saying is that for each HTTPD child process, so in the above start directive, we are starting two child processes, right, so if I have defined two child processes and threads per child 25, right? So what would be the calculation for the number of threads will be generated? It is 50, right? Because threads per child is 25, which is for each child. And a start server, which is generating child processes is defined as two, right? So the total two into 25, 50 threads will be created initially to process the request. So that means if you have a start server two and threads per child 25, that means your server, OHS server will create 50 threads. That means it can accept 50 requests initially. Okay. Now the third one, server limit directive, which I have defined as six. Okay. So this server limit directive, okay, it will control or it will set the ceiling on the number of HTTPD child processes. That means it is controlling the first one, which is a start server directive, right? So which is initially defined as two. Okay. But maybe during the peak load, Okay, you may need few more server directives or you may you need to create more threads, right, to handle the multiple requests, okay, if you are running under the peak load, right. Mm -hmm. So at that time, your OHS will extend the services or you can say it will extend the start server directive and the threads per child, okay, based on the server limit defined. So here you have server limit directive as six, so the start server directive is two, so it can spawn up to six, okay, mm -hmm. that means six into 25 so it will reach max to the directive of six and then the total number of threads can be generated at that time is six into two right six into 25 which will be 150 right so initially is a very set uh, uh, calculation initially when our state uh, start server directory was two and the threads per child was 25 then the total max request that can be handled by the web server is 50, 25 into 2. Now, what I'm saying is that server directory limit, okay, it can reach up to the 6. So, if, if it can reach up to the 6 and each each will generate 25 threads, that means the total threads can be created is 65, 25 into 6, which could be total 150. Okay, and this 150 is your max client directory which you define. Okay, so limit the number of simultaneous connection to Apache OHS server. Okay, so that means 150 years, your OHS server is able to handle the 150 simultaneous request. Okay, so in our case, it is 150, that is where max client directive. So don't modify it without proper tuning of server, ser sorry, it, it, is, it, is a term, uh, it is a typo there, it should be uh, server limit. Okay, so don't modify it without proper tuning of server limit and threads per child. Okay, so thumb rule is that 
your max client should be equal to your server limit into threads per child. Okay, so straight forward whenever you are looking for a certain kind of a configuration for your MPM. Okay, then you can see that your max client should be equal to the server limit into threads per child, right? So here you can see that server limit is six and then threads per child is 25. So if I will multiply 25 by six, then it will become 150. That means your server can able to handle 150 simultaneous requests. But if your threads per child is still 25 and server limit is same six, and you are going to define max client as 300 by assuming that your server can cater the 300 requests, then it will not work. It, it will still process only 150 requests because your server limit is six and your threads per child is still 25. So if you wanted your uh, max client to increase from 150 to uh, three, uh, 300, okay, probably you have to increase your threads per child by 25, maybe 60, right, If uh, 50, okay. So if your th threads per child is 50 and server limit is 6, then you can multiply 50 by 6, 300. Then in that case, your server can able to cater the 300 number of simultaneous requests, okay. Now if you want to switch between the different kind of modes, then you have different options. For, well, first one is you can modify the ohs.plugins.loadmanager.properties file if you have OHS in a standalone domain. Okay, this file you can find inside your uh, staging and instance directory of your OHS, right? Okay, and there you can go and then you can modify this particular property file and change the value of MPM, okay, equal to whatever the MPM you want, work or prefog or event. Second option is you can change with the help of WLST. Okay, the commands given on the screen, you can run the WLST, connect to your admin server, and then you have, you have to enable the edit custom. And then after that, you have to enable the editing of your OHS configurations via node manager. And then you have to start edit, and then you have to set your MPM, which is showing event here in the example. Then you have to save and activate. And the last and third one, you can do it from the EM console as well. You can log into EM console, go to your OHS server. If your OHS is registered with the EM, Okay, and then you have to go to your performance directives and inside performance directives, you can change the name of your MPM, whether it is a worker, event or prefab or whatever you want. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos.